This is a Stanley Bailey No. 4 Type 15, circa 1931 to 1932. Lately, a lot of people have asked me how I set up my smoothing planes due to a ridiculous Instagram battle I have going on with Jonathan Katz Moses on who takes a better shaving. Spoiler alert, it's me. I thought it would be helpful to take a plane in dire need of some attention and get it cleaned and tuned to peak performance. This is a story about that. The other main characters are wire wheels, whether on a cordless drill, bench grinder, or my favorite, the drill press, and some sort of chemical solution to break down some of the rust. In the past, I've used a bath of white vinegar with great success, but this time I thought I'd try a product called Metal Rescue. Start by dismantling the plane. This is the lever cap, which holds the cap iron and cutting iron to the frog, the front knob and rear tote, depth adjustment knob, and finally the frog and lateral adjustment lever. Here's what it all looks like apart. Then it's into the bath they go. While the metal parts were soaking, I worked on the wooden handles. There are a lot of ways to remove the old finish, hand sanding. The side of a chisel works great for scraping. If you have a belt grinder, that works well, and of course the ubiquitous random orbital sander. If you have a lathe, it makes pretty short work of the knob, but you could also chuck it in a cordless drill or drill press. Three hours later, it's time to check on how the rust removal is coming along. This was the first time I've used this product, but I'm really, really impressed. The added benefit is quicker rust removal than vinegar, and also your hands don't smell like a pickle jar. With the rust mostly gone, I take the parts to the wire wheel. I haven't really found a more effective and satisfying method than this to make metal clean again. And it shines up brass really, really Really well. I did take the parts to a buffing wheel, but this step isn't necessary for the functionality of the plane. Next up, I oiled the lateral adjustment lever and started reassembling the plane. The frog on a Bailey plane has two screws which hold it to the body and one screw on the back for adjusting it forward and backward. Then the tote and knob and depth adjustment wheel. The edge on the cutting iron was pretty rough, so I took it to my grinder to put a new edge on it. I put the bevel edge around 25 degrees initially, but the angle of the cutting iron isn't super important on a bevel down plane. From the grinder, I start on my diamond stones, in this case a DMT red-green combo. To hone the initial bevel edge, there's no shame in using a honing jig like this. In fact, I think Old Cat's Moses uses one too, but I prefer to sharpen freehand. It's just quicker and I've done it enough that I'm pretty confident. I like to lift up on the corners of the iron for a few strokes to soften the ears so they don't leave tracks. It's also important to have the back flat. You can flatten the back like this, or you can use what's called the ruler trick, which elevates the iron a few degrees, so you're referencing just the very edge of the iron and not trying to flatten the entire back. Next up, I move to my water stone. This is a 1,000-6,000 grit stone. Same treatment as the diamond stone. I start on the back with the ruler, then freehand the bevel until I can feel a burr forming along the back. Then I lift up just a hair for my primary bevel to add a slight secondary bevel. Then a few more strokes on the back and then the strop. I strop with a piece of scrap leather and honing compound. The strop is really where I find the difference between sharp and really sharp. While I have my stones out, I like to run the edge of the chip breaker over the coarser diamond stone to ensure it's flat. I put the cap iron over the flat back side of the cutting iron and move the chip breaker forward to the edge. I keep mine maybe a sixteenth from the edge. Once I see where the iron sits on the frog, I can adjust the frog forward or backward to open or close the opening of the mouth where the iron protrudes the sole of the plane. Then I tension the lever cap. This is an adjustment that's really a feeling. You want the lever to sort of snap in place but not be so tight that you can't make adjustments to the iron. And with the plane body under tension of the lever cap and the iron backed out of the sole, you can check the sole for flatness. This one was pretty far out off the diamond stone, so I took some sandpaper to the outfeed table of my jointer or another known flat surface and flattened the sole. With that, you should be ready to start taking shavings. To demonstrate, I thought I'd take some full width smoothing passes and some curly hard maple, what a smoothing plane is made for, instead of those edge shavings usually reserved for a jointing application like Jonathan demonstrated. And here you can see I'm taking micro shavings. This one measured in at 5 ten thousandths of an inch, or half a thousandth. And by the way, I'll put affiliate links in the description to all the kinds of stuff that I use, and that actually really helps out the channel if you buy through those links. 
All right, guys, that's it. So that's how I clean and tune up these antique hand planes. This is a Stanley Bailey number no. four type 15. So this dates back to 1931, 1932. If you want to take better shavings than Jonathan Katz Moses, like I do, and get these beautiful wispy micro shavings, this plane is actually going to be up for auction on my Instagram. It'll probably go for uh, a few days, maybe a week. There'll be the details in the description of the post on Instagram. The highest bidder will also have to cover shipping. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're bidding, especially if you're outside of the United States. Um, <clears throat> just a couple last things to note. Uh, a lot of people make a big fuss about closing up the mouth, uh, getting that iron really, really close to the front of the mouth on these planes. Uh, I'm taking beautiful shavings in curly hard maple, uh, and I don't pay too much attention to that, and it's not a, a difficult adjustment um, to move the frog forward. Uh, the most important thing to me is having a razor sharp iron, a flat sole, and to have that chip breaker flat, making sure that it's referencing across the whole iron. So hopefully this helps you guys uh, getting better shavings from your hand planes. Uh, maybe you've got some old hand planes sitting on a shelf somewhere, or maybe a relative has some that are just getting rustier and rustier, and what better way uh, to honor those tools than to put them back into service. So until next time, guys, I'm Will Walker. This is the William Walker Company Project Channel. I'll see you guys real soon. Thanks for watching. Oh, and also, if you want to take part in more ridiculousness uh, over on Instagram, follow the hashtag CatsMosesWalkerFeud. Uh, we, Jonathan and I, have had a lot of fun with that. So if you want to just be a little silly uh, in the woodworking community, uh, follow that hashtag and let me see some of your shavings using that same hashtag. Okay.